One, one from both me. <laughs> so, and, and, hello, and all the people that are standing there uh, enjoying the Smokies, the, the, the Perth Art Growth Smokies. I know they've smoked some wonderful stuff in Perth in the past, but that's the first time I've seen them smoking fish. Usually it's something or even that's uh, grown in the ground, shall we say. So as Colin said, I am a local boy, I'm from Perth. Grew up uh, for a few years in Rattray. Anybody in from Rattray or Blair Gowdy? Couple there, that's great. Um, and for many years I did Radio Scotland. First thing in the morning, you might have heard me. For 18 years I did that. And then I finished on the 13th of March last year. It was time for me to move on, apparently. <laughs> So my life's very different now. I don't have to go up so early in the morning, ladies and gentlemen. But I can have a nice long lie and I get up my, I make myself some porridge, uh, which I think is a very Scottish thing, isn't it? What are you having for breakfast? Green. Oh, that sounds nice. What are you having it with? Water and salt, just in case it tasted nice. Then I nip upstairs and have a shower, come back downstairs about half past ten, quarter to eleven. Do you know what I do then, folks? I phone DPI companies and give them some of their own back. I know you weren't expecting it. I was speaking to a young man called Adam from the Indian subcontinent yesterday. Put him back on. And I didn't believe that was his name either. I've got to think about phones. If somebody, uh, hands up, who, who would stand in the industry that's got a, that still uses the landline? Right, about 12 of you. I bet if you get an incoming call on your landline, it's from one of three people. It's either a PPI company, it's somebody trying to sell you something, or your mother-in-law. And they all get the same response in my house, which is, stop phoning us. We've opted out. Oh, it's you, Marion. Hi, how are you getting on? I'm going to give you a couple of tips today, ladies and gentlemen. Tip number one, if somebody phones you up, and ask if you can take part in a telephone survey. Just do what we do in our house. We just say, oh, we'd love to help you, but unfortunately we can't. And they'll say, why not? And we say, we don't have a phone. That'll confuse them. Years ago, sitting at the kitchen table, enjoying dinner at 6 p.m., I got a phone call, somebody around me up and said, hello, Mr. McCauley. I said, yes. And they said, are you thinking about buying a kitchen? I said, thinking about it? I can think of very little else. Thank God you phoned. You might just help save my marriage. You can get round here and fit a kitchen in the front hallway. You've got a sale, young man. Why the front hallway? Well, every other room is a kitchen. You weren't the first to phone. Now we've got some youngsters here. I thought it was very brave of Colin to run down and ask a wee girl if she had a boyfriend. He doesn't even work for the BBC. But what's that? <laughs> Wrong taste. Because. <laughs> Not everybody will know who I am, but some kids in here haven't a clue who I am. Ask your granny, okay? And if Johnny is looking after me, the security guy right there, he said, Oh, Fred, uh, I was here the last time you were up here in Perth with Ali McCoy doing that sports scene. Sports scene! The show had my own name attached to it, and I still see Ali now and again. And I golfed with them in June, and there was two characters in the railway station beside the first team, and one of them looked over and he said, There's Ali McCoy and that other bloke of McCoy and Macaulay. Right? I don't think it's too hard to work out who I might be. And the people that are down from Rattray, when I lived in Rattray, do you know what we used to do in the summer holidays? Wait here, this kids. Do you know what we got to do in the summer holidays? For six or seven weeks when we were off school, we got to go and pick berries. We used to pick raspberries, which was all right, because you were standing up with strawberries, you were buckled over. Isn't that right? Did you pick them? Right? Picked in for six or seven weeks and then we'd come all the way in from Rattray to Perth at the end of the holidays for a wee treat because we got to save up all the money that we made and we were able to spend that money on a thing called a school uniform. <laughs> that was our special wee treat and if we had anything left over we could buy shoes. Times were hard. Now Colin said it's my first gig outdoors. In Perth it is. I've done outdoor gigs as well. I've done good gigs, I've done tough gigs. Toughest outdoor gig I ever did. 2003. I went to Iraq to entertain the troops. It was just like this. Tough gig. <laughs> Naively, I'd assume they would have been the Allied troops. <laughs> Those Iraqi boys, no sense of humour at all. I've got a lot of shoes. Oh man, the food that I got. <laughs> so I'm sitting at home. I get a phone call and it's somebody from a call centre. Right? Anybody work in a call centre? Anybody work? <laughs> Stand at the side there, it says no loading, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Put your tie away. You're loading your car, loading, aren't you? 
Come on, you, twice around the North End. <laughs> Kill walk. So, the phone goes, and it's a girl from our call centre, and uh, she worked for a bank, right? I'm not going to tell you which bank, but uh, they've got an association with Halifax. Halifax, bank is called. Hello, it's me, Mr. McCall. I said, yeah, speaking. And she asked if I was a customer of the bank, and I'm not, but I said I was. It's a lot, a lot of time on my hands. And she asked me to take part in the survey, and I said, well, let's give her a hello. Let's take. She said, about 10 minutes. I said, well, give me an extra couple of minutes at the start. I'll put the kettle on. Let's enjoy ourselves. And she said, do you use our high street branches, Mr. McCall? I said, I do. Every time I'm in town, I pop in. I don't. Would you say the level of service you get in the high street branches is excellent? Very good, good, fair report. I said, oh, it's excellent. We can't fault it. Oh, she says, that's great, Dick. Do you use our internet services, Mr. McCall? I said, I do. Every time I log on, I'll be honest, it's one of my, one of my second favourite sites. That's for the dads. <laughs> Would you say the level of service you get on the internet is excellent? Very good, good, fair report. <coughs> so oh, it's excellent as well, can't fault it. Oh, that's great. She says, many more questions? She says, eh, about 20. I said, we used to in and put the toast on as well. <laughs> we got all the way through the question there. I answered excellent to every question, folks. We got to the end, and I wasn't feeling good about myself because I've been having a go at her right, taking the mickey. But she got her own back, because at the end she says, Now then, Mr. McCall, eh, before we finish, can I ask what you do for a living? I said, yeah, man, I'm a comedian. <laughs> she went, really? <laughs> what have you been on? I said, well, I've been quite lucky. I've done QI, I've done Walk the Week. I mean, have I got news for you? Then I hear this, right? The call center, I hear this. <laughs> and she comes back on, she says, Are you funny? I said, well, that's how we think about the last 10 minutes. Would you say it was excellent, very good, good fair and true? So you can play your game. Oh, nice work, fella! And I take to an applaud. Come on, everybody take a step forward. Take a step. I feel an atmosphere building up, really. It's really, we're, we're ranking it. It's, we're almost at tepid. Come on. How's the smokies? Nothing. Nothing at all. I did it again two years ago, and I, I, I did another outdoor game. I did Edinburgh Castle, right? Everybody, who remembers the big gig before the Commonwealth Games started in Glasgow? Remember the big gig on BBC? Cracking gig! I got to do it, right? Uh, me and Ronnie, the late Ronnie Corbett. Me and Ronnie were the only two Scottish people in the bill. And I'll tell you why we got the gig. Because I'm cheaper than Kevin Bridges. <laughs> and Ronnie's less offensive than Frankie Boyle. That's why we got the gig. Poor me, Ronnie's no longer with us. And uh, they said, now, Mr. McCauley, what are you going to do when you get out there? I said, well, we'll just play it by ear. So we'll see what the audience is like. Oh, no, we need to know what your jokes are. And I said, well, I'm going to go out. Right, this is dodgy. I said, I'm going to go out. I'm going to say, this is wonderful. All these people here live in front of a big castle for a televised gig. It's a wee bit like the Queen's Diamond Jubilee concert from Buckingham Palace last year, but without the paedophiles and the tax dodgers. So I'm happy with that. I'm not happy. And speaking about smoking, do you know who, do you know who the headline act was? Smokey Robinson. Right, this is the second Smokey gig I've done in two years. Smokey has got the most bizarre face I've ever seen in my life, folks. He's had more facial surgery than anybody I've ever met. A really very, very odd looking man. Do you know what his, his closing song was? The musician Julio has won Tears of a Clown, right? Which includes the line, so take a good look at my face. Don't. If there's a smile that looks out of place, well, you nailed that, Smokey. It's halfway up where your nose used to be in your daft days. Another step forward, like if there's something happening here, Perth. We've got people coming in from Stormontfield. <laughs> I've been doing a vlog in King Edward Street. I found thanks, man. <laughs> so I should know better than speak to an audience. In that very space there, in that very city hall that we're also very proud of. <laughs> I saw Jules Holland in there a number of years ago and Jules bounced on the stage and he goes, Hello Perth, how are you doing? There's a bloke just like you down the front and he goes, I know bad actually Jules. <laughs> We're just in at the camp there and I saw your name in the blackboard and I says, Hey Margaret, that's that bloke off the telly, he does good money at Christmas and New Year, he can. We didn't watch it like it's on BBC 2, we just stick with BBC 1 and we're hoping 
in Sky in a couple of years. We're just, you know, excuse me, I was just reading the little journals about the, the chicken fajitas for my dinner there, but it's fair coming back and we had any kind of fajitas means, I think it means any chicken and hot peppers and stuff like that. But, uh, and a bottle of lethal oil wagon, and it was three fifty for a bottle of jewels. You couldn't believe it, because one of my pints just threw but too fond of Ken, but it's four percent, so I don't care if it's good for What's that, sir? Well, you asked me. <laughs> People will respond, right? And I, as Colin said, I, I, look, but I don't live in, don't live in, I, I'm not in Perth anymore, folks. I live in Glasgow. Yeah. Won't ever be able to fully consider myself 100% Glaswegian, though, because I've retained the ability to mind my own business. <laughs> Glasgow people can't do that. If you're ever free in Glasgow, somebody will come up and start talking to you. Hiya, how are you, right? And they all speak like that. They're all nasal. All the, the, the Glasgow names, they all speak through their nose, right? Because their wee skip hacks are a wee bit too tight. I've seen them buying them. Oh, yes, I'm interested in one of your hacks there, a Burberry one. That'd be just the job. Pop it on. Well, it's a little bit loose. Could you rack it up a wee bit? Ah, it's a wee bit better now. Just put in one more. Oh, yeah, that's a wee bit more. Where are you from? You from Perth? Where are you from Perth? Where are you from? Craigie, Craigie, that's nice, isn't it, man? You got a big house in Craigie, is it? I said, oh, it's a deterrence, right? Like, oh, he's, he's texting. He's texting his Perth Ned pal, telling him there's an empty. <laughs> I'm just a man of average intelligence. That's what I want to tell you people here, right? Hey, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> you having a good time? Good. Delighted. You're, you're exactly my demographic. <clears throat> I should explain what demographic means. Right? Because I'm a man of average intelligence. No more, no less than the average intelligence here in this street in Perth today. And you're maybe thinking, Fred, how would you work out the average intelligence? And it's easy. We start with that chap right there. We add up all the intelligence until we get to you, mate, and then we divide it with the number of people and we got an average. I can see from some of your faces you're not following me anymore. That's fine. It's fine. It's just the ones that don't follow me that we get the average. Okay? Now you're thinking, oh, come on, he's patronising us, isn't he? Well, who knows? And I was. And the ones that knew were the ones with above average intelligence, okay? So just laugh along. <laughs> but I had to question it, ladies and gentlemen. I had to question my average intelligence. I, I got a phone call from a guy who wanted me to go down and do a gig in Bristol southwest of England and I went online and there is an airline that flies from Glasgow where I explained I live to Bristol when you look out I don't. Right? That's kind of the way that air, airlines operate. They take you from some place you live to some place you don't then back again if need be. Pretty much how the whole transport system works. But I have been into too much detail. And I'm not going to give the airline the benefit of some free advertisement. They wear predominantly orange uniforms, okay? You with me? And some of the staff spend their money on predominantly orange makeup. <laughs> as do the women. And I, I took myself down to Glasgow Airport. Now, you need to know something about Glasgow. It has two airports, ladies and gentlemen. Two airports. One in Paisley, which is a town near Glasgow, and another one in Presswick, which is a town near Carlisle. <laughs> Don't get them mixed up. I was at the proper Glasgow Airport and I walked up to the check-in desk on the appointed day and there was a wee class region girl sitting there. Now, the West of Scotland people believe that there is a plural of the word you called youth. And you can use use if you've got several thank yous to make, but not in the circumstances I was in, which was me on my own at the check-in desk. And she says to me, where are you travelling to? And uh, I, we, we are travelling to Bristol. Oh, she says, we fly there. Well, this is excellent news. I just used a random check-in desk idea. I see a jackpot. And I'm feeling so dashed fortunate I might go from here and buy myself a lottery ticket. Although clearly I'm not obese enough to win. Don't owe me like that, Perth. You've never seen a skinny lottery winner in your life. That's why the checks are huge. Find them. And with that couple from here, the 161 million. The <laughs> Teletubbies, they were. Is this going to change your life? I well, we'll be decided to give up salad. <laughs> so I'm still going to question my average intelligence. She then said to me, Have you used any bags to check in? And I should point out, she had a thing in the top of her head uh, that I believe is called a scrunchie. 
It's kind of like a wee ponytail thing, and you pull all your hair up through the scrunchie and bust your forehead and well, just in case you haven't been nippy enough. And what effectively you get then is like a hair fountain at the top of your head, right? I mean, why you? It's a bizarre looking. Why just wear it around the back? All sexy like a horse. That's what I would say. Shouldn't say it out loud, obviously. And then she hit me with a question that made me doubt my average intelligence. She said, could anybody, and that's, that's a Glasgow word meaning anyone, she said, could anybody, and it's just spelled NBD, could anybody have interfered with your baggage without your knowledge? Yeah, something could very well have interfered with my baggage without my knowledge, because if it's out of my knowledge, I don't know what's happened. So yes, I'll tell you this. See, if you say that, you don't get to go to Bristol. <laughs> I had to phone the man up. He said, it's Fred here, I'm not coming. He said, why not? He said, well, I've failed the philosophy test. <laughs> and that actually made me a wee bit angry, ladies and gentlemen, because despite my average intelligence, I happen to be quite good at philosophy. And do you know why? Because I've been married for 32 years. If you're in a relationship that length of the time, there's a fair chance philosophy will exist in your life. Philosophy pitched up in my house. After 25 years together, as I was creeping into the bedroom at quarter to five one morning, and my wife looked up and she said to me, where do you think you've been? I said, uh, I think I've been in a nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, I have been in a nightclub. <laughs> she said, how old do you think you are? I said, I need a calculator and a calendar for this mess. How, what time do you think it is? And I said, I think it's caught. I said, don't even think about speaking to me. To which I replied, why is this the written part of the examination? <laughs> which I thought was quite a smart line given the circumstances. In fact, she let me, I, I'm misquoting my beloved. She said, where do you think you've been exactly? How old do you think you are exactly? What time do you think it is exactly? You ever noticed that, fellas? A degree of exactness creeps into the argument when one of the two people in the argument is not as drunk as the man. <laughs> and then, then, surprise, surprise, I was then invited to spend the remainder, the little of what remained of the night, in the spare bedroom. Now, I've got pals here that have seen me doing gigs for years and years. 28 years I've been doing stand-up comedy and I have asked this at every single gig I've done. Which woman was it? that imagined that banishing a husband of 25 years to the spare bedroom would constitute a form of punishment. <laughs> Was that the spare room? Oh no! Oh, I'm furious with myself. I'll be crawling back here on my hands and knees, you wait and see. Six, seven weeks from now, I'll be back. Another step forward. We're nearly done. I think it's pointless having a crush barrier up here if nobody's going to get crushed. <laughs> You're in prime position, missus. So, they're pretty good crowd building up here now. Um, and is there anybody here who's not from Perth? You! Right? <laughs> You're very quick to answer. Where are you in from? From Fife! Oh, wow, you must be loving this. Tarmac on the road, so all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Well done you for getting up here from Fife and I see you've still only got one bag. You obviously haven't started sh stealing yet, that's great. That's absolutely fine. What about your friend? Where are you up from? You're from Fife as well. Two people from Fife. I'll get the police. That's actually, you're actually a riot. Now, and whereabouts in Fife are you from, girls? Down Fairman. Oh, wow. You just up here to look at stuff in the shops. Uh -huh. Then go home and get it off Amazon. It's a big Amazon place near them Fairland, isn't it? You'll get it for free because you can't Bobby, Bobby wants it. You can get it for nothing. You'll just put it in the back of his van. He'll bring it around your house. It's really, it's brilliant. So, two of you from Fife. Anybody? Oh, hi, where are you from? You're from Blair Gowry. Good on you. And are you at the primary school in Blair Gowry? You know what? Well, Oh, you live in Perth now? That, that's great, so we're getting the whole life story. That's excellent. Good on you. Blair Gary, you've made it all the way to Perth. See, it's a big journey, isn't it? Blair Gary is a good place. It really is, but nothing quite like the metropolis of Perth. I'll tell you what metropolis means. It's made out of two words, metro and pop. Oh, there's a man filming over there. That's great. We might end up on you, YouTube. <laughs> 
or the, what is the Fife website? You heard that? Come on. <laughs> is that too adult? Is it too, is it too, too <laughs> Fred Macaulay. So it's been really nice of to, you to, to actually drift along here as I'm getting towards the end of my wee stint. So it's really nice, nice that you would come out and uh, have, have such a good time to celebrate St Andrew's Day. Uh, a few days in, in advance of St Andrew's Day, I think that's a good thing to do. Because we really need a lot to celebrate in Scotland. I don't think, I don't think we celebrate enough, am I right? Yay! We've got Sir, surely it's going to be Sir Andy Murray by the end of the year. Do you not agree? Isn't he great? Wonderful. And I, I think Andy's just brilliant. I, I really hope that he, not that he needs it, but surely he's going to get some, some TV adverts. I mean, Roger Federer, he was doing Gillette for hundreds of thousands of pounds. I, I had a TV advert last year after I left the BBC. Do you know, you know what one I got? Bowel cancer awareness. <laughs> yeah, it's my voice that tells you to send poo through the post if you're over 50. If you're doing it under 50, there's no need for that. That's just, that's against the law as a matter of fact, right? No, we're doing it. <laughs> I'd love to see Andy Murray get that. What was it, Roger Federer? What did he say? Gillette. He got Gillette. Give Andy Murray Wilkinson sword. That would be great, but he just said Wilkinson sword. Safety razors. It's almost impossible to cut yourself. And I've been trying. You know, when Andy Murray won Wimbledon the first time, Alex Salmon, who was our first minister at the time, Big Egg came on the TV and he said, Andy Murray winning Wimbledon, another example of Scotland punching above its weight. And I thought that really defines our country, doesn't it? When our greatest successes are measured in terms of violence and obesity. <laughs> How do you get on? Fine, I punched a fat bloke. The mighty saints. Uh, there we are, now we're talking, eh? Uh, no game this weekend, though, have we? No? Somebody's playing Aberdeen this afternoon, I know. That's why, that's why we're doing the gig now. We thought we'd give Aberdeen people a chance to stop off and see something for nothing. <laughs> they get a tough time, Aberdeenies, don't they? That they're tight-fisted. No, it's really not true. Although I heard American Express were bringing out a beige card for Aberdeenians for purchases up the value of £4.99. <laughs> Do you know what's an Aberdeenian Trollman won the lottery? Right? <clears throat> he won the, and his wife radioed him and said, come home, we've won the lottery, 4.8 million, which I thought was jolly decent of, of her. I would have got a wee note left in the kitchen table. You may be wondering where I've gone with the 4.8 million, you loser. That's for making jokes about me. Anyway, so he sails home in his trawler boat, he gets in Aberdeen Harbour, after two days, steps down the gangplank, there's a TV camera there, and they said, Fit you going to do, where are the money? And do you know what his, what his, his response was? Too early to think. It's taken him 48 hours to sail. What's been going through his mind?